So let's see how we produce some uh, some simple decor like like you see here. We inflate the balloon. Okay. When it starts to get this little light bulb shape, we know that it's it's probably a little bit overinflated. Then we come to our sizer. Again, sizing is very important. All our balloons have to be sized uh, the same size for, to get the professional look. This is a Qualtex balloon, 11-inch uh, balloon, which means that it should be fully inflated 11 inches on the diameter. So I've got my slide in size here, a, sp a spacer. I'm going to drag my balloon through it and then just let a little bit of helium out. Now it's perfectly sized 11 inches again from side to side. And now the customer came up to us, let's say, and they gave us a foil balloon. These are the bubble balloons, okay? And we've all, uh, of course, done mylar balloons. The bubbles are a little bit different, okay? A mylar balloon, you would use the mylar inflator so it has less pressure and won't compromise our valve. When we're working with the bubble balloons, though, we need a lot of pressure because we're getting a little bit different shape to this, more of a round bubble shape than the disc shape of those mylars that we're used to. So we go over to our latex tip, and we inflate it. Now if this was a foil balloon, this is about where we would stop. It has the disc shape to it, and there's a few wrinkles on the side. And it's firm, but not hard. And that's the proper size for a foil mylar balloon. These are the bubble balloons, so we want to get all the wrinkles out and get more of a round shape to it. So you go, go, go. Okay, so that I still see some wrinkles, keep going, keep going. Okay, no wrinkles on that. Okay. You think it's gonna pop on you, and you still keep going with it, okay? You want that, and it should be now real hard, like a beach ball. So we grab three balloons, and then we put it underneath our top balloon, and then we ride, uh, let them raise up. See you know how the balloons are just separated? And then we bring them down till they just touch. Now all three balloons are just touching, okay? Then we'll take off four ribbons, and we tie them. Okay. And then we'll go to our next layer, and we'll do the same thing. Take them, we want all the necks the same, so all the tops are the same. Bring it underneath our bouquet, okay? Raise it up so now they're not touching, and then raise it down so they're just touching. And then we want to measure at a certain distance, so let's just use our elbow. So you grab the next, bring it down to your elbow, and this is what we're going to tie our knot. We need to attach it to something. We need a nice weight. The great thing about our stores is we've got thousands of items in our stores that are perfect, again, to hold down this bouquet of balloons. But if we're going to uh, be known as a more of a professional uh, balloon company inside of our stores, then maybe we want to do uh, a balloon base, something that has a lot of volume to it, Again, that's very inexpensive for us to, to make, but we can again charge you 10, $12 a base. Let me show you how easy that is to make one of these bases. Now again, these are the Qualitex 11 inch balloons, and if you remember I said when you're healing them, inflate them, you want to inflate them to 11 inches. That's the proper size, the maximum size with helium. Whenever you put air inside of a balloon, you always want to underinflate them. These balloons are going to get it uh, nestled together. They're going to be tied tighter. They might be on the floor, get a little more action from the kids grabbing them. So we want them underinflated so they're more pliable. So we'll take our slide in size. These are 11-inch balloons. The maximum you'd want to inflate them with air is approximately 90% of whatever the maximum diameter is. So on an 11-inch balloon, really no bigger than 9.5 inches. So I decided to make ours at 9 inches, so I'll take my sizer and I'll put it right at nine inches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inflate one balloon, over inflate it, over inflate it with air, drag it through my sizer, drag it through my sizer, tie it together, and tie the two together, and after that'll be a duplet. I'll make another duplet, twist the two together, and that's gonna be my bottom cluster. And again, the easiest way to put these two together is just take a neck, and any neck on the other cluster, 
and just tie the two together. Okay? And now we've got our base. If you wanted to make it go up higher, 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 you can do the same thing. So you just put two water balloons on here. This is a good way if you have some older balloons laying around uh, that you're thinking are popping a little bit too much. Maybe they've been exposed to the light a little bit too much. A good thing to do is, again, use them as water balloons. And this is a nice base. Again, a little bit of space in here. We kind of need to fill that up. So let's put some embellishments in here. Let's try some of those, those long 260 balloons, but maybe this time, let's see if we can curl them. What we want to do to curl these now is we wrap them on our finger without twisting the balloon, and then we're going to put it on our air inflator, and it should curl for us. What we need to do first is just inflate it one time straight, and then deflate it. Now we'll take it, and we'll just wrap it around our fingers. Again, being careful not to put a twist in the balloon. Then we come to our air inflator. We can put a little crazy curl in there for us. So now I've got something a little more fun on the bottom, okay? And again, something like this is probably less than $2 in materials. And again, in our store, we would, again, retail that base for $12. The next important point I want to bring up is that if a customer came to us and, you know, and then again, every time we had this bouquet, we would take a picture of it and they would come in and they would order that bouquet now. Again, if you're going to give this to the customer, what are they going to be thinking? How am I getting it from the store into my car? It's gonna get tangled, I've done this with balloons. It's a big hassle. So again, we should always be putting things in bags. Now the customer feels a lot better taking this out than a bouquet, you know. Even on a windy day, this might blow around again. It could tip upside down, do different things. They put it in their car sideways, but they'll take it home. Okay, and again, it looks just like it was when we put it in there. a stuffed balloon. You want to put a bear inside of a balloon. We can do that easily with this piece of equipment, the super stuffer. First thing we do, we take a clear 18 inch stuffing balloon. We'll turn it inside out. We take our expander. Put the neck of the balloon over the expander. Fully expand it. Put it over our ring. Slowly release it. We take our fingers and put it on the latex balloon and we push down and give a little twist and get our expander off the balloon. Then we press the button here and it's going to be pulling the air out of the chamber, allowing our balloon to fully inflate. We can't over inflate the balloon uh, because it has an automatic stop for us. Okay. Now our balloon is fully inflated inside the chamber. We've got a large five inch opening which allows us to put anything that we can put through or squish through a five inch opening inside the balloon. Then we might want to take some shred, then we'll take our plush animal, and then we, we would want to embellish it uh, with some small tiny balloons on the inside. And then when you put the, the latex balloons inside, sometimes you give it a little twist like a light bulb and just set them inside. So now we've got our bear inside the balloon. We just reversed the process, and now we've got our stuffed balloon. Next thing I want to talk about is the balloon decorating equipment. Uh, same thing when a customer comes on, on Valentine's Day or it's a birthday and they come over and they bring you a balloon. Yep, yeah, we cut this one down and we have it, it's already inflated, and they bring it to you and it's a little soft, they might not notice or care, but you should have your employees all trained to always give it a quick uh, little zap at the end, and they'll really appreciate that. Like, oh, thank you. You know, and it's probably costing you maybe a, a penny or two in helium, but that balloon is going to stay inflated now for another week, uh, and they'll appreciate that. So again, that minimally, this is again the equipment you, you, you would need your employees to use is the foil tip inflator. Uh, another piece of equipment that I showed is this cool air inflator. And again, this allows us to quickly inflate the air filled balloons. And again, you can see the profit margin in that. We really should uh, minimally have one of these. To uh, use this on the small balloons is great, but anything bigger, uh, six, seven inches, nine inches, this is uh, 
way too much work for us, and uh, this piece of equipment's not made for that. So we need a nice mini cool air inflator with the different tips on it. Uh, we have to have some sort of sizer to pull our balloons through. If you don't have a sizer, you can kind of um, fabricate one yourself by maybe just taking a chair, turning it back to the back, and then taking a ruler and spacing it nine inches from the back to the back and then bringing our balloons through there. Uh, but eventually, again, you like to have a nice piece of equipment that's real easy to go from nine inches to 11 inches to seven inches. Another piece of equipment is the corral. Again, whenever you make balloons, you need something for them to go up to so you can kind of grab them. Even if somebody wants a dozen or two balloons, again, you want them to go up on something, never on the ceiling. Uh, besides, they could pop, they could kind of collect dust on the top of them and then maybe get some static electricity, and that might cause the balloons to pop uh, when the customer takes them out. Uh, it, it's best to have a good selection of latex and foil balloons. Something with the happy birthday, of course, the get well, congratulations, and a lot of different styles. They're coming out with the polka dots now that are very popular, uh, all the vibrant colors. The bigger selection we have uh, gives the customer a better opportunity, again, to find something that's going to fit their particular needs. And this, again, by doing this, uh, you can, you're going to set your store apart uh, than from the other stores. Next thing I want to talk about is when we do uh, helium-filled balloons, again, remember we said that the latex usually only floats about 15 hours. A lot of times that's not going to be good enough for the customer. They're going to want to pick balloons up early in the morning so they can decorate their event, put their balloons around. Their event's going to start at 6. It's going to go to maybe midnight. The balloons are going to be kind of half floating. So we need to do something uh, to alleviate that. And they've come up with a solution called High Float. It's a liquid... Uh, uh, that we squirt inside the balloon, we coat the inside of the balloon with it, then when we inflate it, again, the helium molecules have a harder time escaping. So now we can get our balloons to float 10 times as long. It costs you about seven cents to put high float inside of a balloon. So uh, again, it's a great value, a great add-on, 25 cents, maybe 50 cents uh, for somebody to have a balloon treated with the solution. And then now they can pick up their balloons on a Saturday, decorate for a Sunday event. When we put them in bouquets, like we're talking about later, uh, we don't want the balloons just to, to deflate and die after a day or two even. It would be great if they could have a full bouquet of latex and foil balloons that last a week or so. So that's what this high float is going to do for us. Another piece of equipment that, uh, again, if your store is doing uh, anywhere over 100 balloons in a day, uh, again, this is kind of the old school method where you take the balloon, high float it, put it on your sizer, uh, or, I'm sorry, your latex inflator, and then pulling it through the sizer, that's kind of old school. What you really want is a piece of equipment uh, similar to this where it's an automatic sizer, uh, a digitally uh, set timer. You put it on there. Now you know that maybe it's at 1.2, does your 11-inch balloons. All your staff knows that. They take a balloon, put it over, and press a button or press the foot pedal, and the balloon will inflate to 11 inches every time.